you may have heard that the sun is an average star, but that's not true. The average star in the galaxy is a feisty, hostile little thing called an M star. Hi everyone, astrobiologist here to talk about the galaxy's most badly behaved stars. You won't see a single M star in the night sky, but they're everywhere. This is because they're the smallest and coolest class of star, so even though they're 75% of stars, they're so dim you can't see them. This actually has major implications for their planetary systems. An M star is on average about half the temperature of our sun, so a planet like the Earth would have to be a lot closer to feel the same amount of heat. The M star habitable zone is right up against the star, a place that you do not want to be around an M star. If stars were dogs, M stars would be chihuahuas, tiny, harboring an unspeakable evil, and generally prone to outbursts. Our sun is more like a laid back golden retriever, which produces gigantic flares that hit the earth every couple hundred years. M stars do this every day. On earth, solar flares produce aurorae as they interact with our atmosphere. But a planet without an atmosphere is just getting blasted by close range intense solar radiation. Or if it begins life with an atmosphere, it does not have one for long because flares strip away material very rapidly. But wait, there's more. Even without the solar flares, M stars still produce an extreme amount of UV and X-ray radiation, even more than an ozone layer like ours could handle. Also, many of the planets are tidally locked or they have one side permanently facing the star, kind of like the moon has one side that permanently faces the Earth. As you can imagine, having a permanent day side and a permanent night side is not ideal for life. So big picture, M stars are everywhere, and they're actually even easier to study than other star types, but they're not necessarily good hosts for life. So when you hear on the news things about the TRAPPIST-1 system, for example, an M star with seven planets, keep in mind that this is a less habitable system than something like our own solar system. So the odds of finding life are actually quite a bit lower. If you like my science videos, consider subscribing and keep an eye out for my upcoming book, Life in Seven Numbers, available next year from Princeton University Press.